I'd like to introduce you to Katrina Lake. Act 1, Her Youth. Katrina Lake was born in San Francisco, and her home was a bicultural home. Her mother, a teacher, was Japanese, and her dad, a doctor, is American. And as a child, Katrina's family encouraged her to be creative. She remembers planning and writing a number of stories about how she thought the way things could be. This would work well for her as she started her career. Well, at 15, Katrina and her family moved halfway across the United States to Minnesota. But it was more than just a geographical move. It was a dramatic cultural diversity move. In San Francisco, seven out of ten of Katrina's classmates were Asian. In Minnesota, only three classmates in the entire school were Asian. But not only was Katrina's household bicultural, it was also bilingual. Her mother only spoke Japanese and her father only spoke English and her family celebrated both Japanese holidays and American holidays. Well, Katrina extended this bicultural atmosphere to the lunch she brought to school. Three days a week, it was a Japanese-style lunch, like onigiri, which is rife balls stuffed with something in the middle. And two days a week, it was an American lunch, like sandwiches. Let's look at the crossroad moment for act number one. What is a crossroad moment? It is those times in your life when you choose to do what most people do, that is follow popular opinion, or you can choose to go against a trend and do just the opposite. The crossroad moment for Katrina was in high school. There is tremendous peer pressure to blend in with the in crowd. What would most people do? They would try to act as American as possible so that they could be accepted by the in-crowd. Ah, uh, but not Katrina. Katrina proudly displayed her multicultural background with her lunch choices. Katrina Lake was unapologetically proud of who she was. Act number two, consult. Katrina attended Stanford as a pre-med student because she thought she was going to be a doctor like her dad. But she became fascinated with economics because of its use of statistics, which she became obsessed with. So Katrina changed her major to economics. After graduating, Katrina was not interested in becoming an entrepreneur. So she went to work for a consulting firm that specialized in retail. Katrina had a lot of ideas about how to improve the retail business. For example, she says, you know what? Retail should be personalized. Retail should not just be a transaction. Retail should be an experience. And in 2006, the year before the iPhone was introduced, Katrina was on a consulting assignment with a large retail client when she was asked a question that changed her life. Here's the question. Katrina, what do you think the future of retail is going to be like? Well, here is Katrina's answers. She says, well, why do you have to have every SKU 
and in every single size on the floor. Because a person has to walk in, and for the clothes she might be interested in, she has to find her size herself, and then she has to take it all to a, fit, a fitting room. She says, not a pleasant experience. She says, I envision where a person enters a store, logs in, and is given a wand. And as she walks around the beautifully merchandised items, she simply scans the items she is interested in with her wand. Then she walks in the back, where she is greeted by a concierge and taken to her fitting room. And there in her fitting room are all the items she scanned in her size and one size larger and one size smaller, and recommended accessories that coordinate with her scanned items. She says, this is a much better experience than walking the entire store, weeding through racks of clothes, trying to find her things. The executive looked at Karina and thought, interesting, but totally impractical. And who the hell is this 23-year-old telling me about the future of retail? Well, after two years of dealing with this, Katrina left consulting and went to work for a VC firm. Let's look at the crossroad moment for Act 2. After being criticized by a top retail executive for her controversial opinion about the future of retail, what would most people do? They would keep their controversial ideas to themselves in order to avoid criticism. Ah, but not Katrina. Katrina was unapologetically convinced that her vision of the retail of the future was correct. Act 3, the VC firm. Well, Katrina went to work for a venture capital company because she was tired of the long hours working at the consulting firm. And even though Katrina had no desire to be a venture capitalist or an entrepreneur, she thought, you know, if I'm going to find a founder with a vision of retail that was similar to mine, I would probably find that person while working for a VC firm. But it did not work out that way. Katrina met hundreds of entrepreneurs and did not find any of them that had a viable vision for the future of retail. And none of them impressed Katrina that they were as visionary about retail as she was. So Katrina came to the conclusion, if I cannot find anyone with the future vision of the future of retail that I agree with, then maybe I can do this myself. Let's look at the crossroad moment for Act 3. Katrina could not find any VC client who shared her vision about the future of retail. What would most people do? They would question and doubt if their vision of the future of retail was even plausible, viable, or correct. Ah, but not Katrina. Katrina was unapologetically convinced that her vision of the future of retail was correct. Act for Harvard. Well, Katrina... Being risk averse, she did not leap into starting a business. She left the VC firm and enrolled in Harvard Business School to get her NBA. And risk averse Katrina had a plan A and a plan B. Plan A, she will invest two years of her time getting her NBA. And even if she is a mediocre student, she will get her company funded. She will be able to pay herself a salary and also pay back her student loans. And her plan B, maybe I'll find a great company with a great founder and go to work for that company. She preferred plan B. But while attending Harvard Business School, Katrina came to the following conclusions about what to do for the rest of her life. She only wanted to work in retail and she was not interested in working in any other industry. And also more and more retail dollars were going to e-commerce and not brick and mortar stores. But as far as Katrina could tell, 
all of the emotion and nuance had been stripped out of e-commerce. She says, for example, buying a dress for that special occasion or buying a box of Kleenex, they were both treated with the same non-emotion. She says, this was unacceptable. So Katrina thought, in e-commerce, how can I deliver a personal experience and apparel and use data and technology, remember her love of statistics, to make it a scalable dis business? That is when Katrina Lake had her what-if moment. Number one, what if instead of going to the mall all day, and what if instead of, instead of spending her entire evening with browser tabs open all over the place trying to compare and contrast the different jeans she may be interested in buying, what if she receives a box delivered to her that had two pairs of jeans that matches her style and fits her perfectly. So in 2010, while still a student at Harvard Business School, Katrina tested her idea. She had 20 friends and friends of friends in Boston, which is where Harvard is, fill out a survey. And on the survey, they, they checked off their size and their style, what things they liked, and what brands they liked. And then based on the survey results, Katrina would go out and buy inventory at retail. By the way, she only bought items that had a 30-day return policy. Then Katrina would send each person a personalized box with what she thought they would like. They could return any items that they, they did not like, and, and they would write a check for the items they decided to keep. And Katrina only had a credit card with a $6,000 limit to test out her, her idea. And you know what? It worked. And boy, did it work. This test taught Katrina two things. Number one, she could actually learn a lot about a person's taste from the survey. And number two, if a person received an item that was selected specifically for them, they would try it and they would buy brands they had never even heard of. Katrina had learned enough. It was now time to launch her business. Let's look at the crossroad moment for this Act 4. Is running a Boston-based test with only 20 people enough to decide to start a business? What would most people do? They would do a lot more testing, and just to make sure, they would ask their friends if this was the right thing to do. Ah, but not Katrina. Katrina was unapologetically convinced that now was the right time to launch her business. Katrina's aha moment. In late 2010, while still enrolled in Harvard Business School, Katrina formed a company she called Stitch Fix. And Katrina scheduled her classes so that she would have one week off per month. Three weeks a month, Katrina would attend classes and write her business plan. And one week a month, Katrina would fly from Boston to California to meet with angel investors. Katrina described Stitch Fix as a personalized styling service. It would be staffed with data scientists who would formulate each client's buying habits and also stylists who would select up to six items specifically selected for each client. And each month, or as frequently as the client deserved, Stitch Fix would send up to six of those specifically selected items. A tough sell, but Katrina was unapologetically obsessed and convinced that this was the future of retail. Well, on Valentine's Day in 2011, Katrina got her term sheet for $500,000 from an angel investor. And as they say, the rest is history. To date, Katrina has raised $42 million. Stitch Fix has been profitable since 2014. 
In 2016, Stitch Fix recorded sales of $730 million. And in November 2017, Stitch Fix went public. Today, they have 5,500 employees, 75 are data scientists, and 300 a stylist. It is estimated that Katrina Lake's net worth is over $300 million. Not bad for a student who decided she did not want to be a doctor or an entrepreneur. Katrina Lake, you are a luminary, and that is why you make millions and most people don't. Thank you.